Coming to Kickstarter this June, John Haynes at Death's Door, the man who rules the world, takes on the Greek god of death in this action-packed all-new John Haynes comic book. Get your copy of the standard and variant editions of John Haynes at Death's Door and lots of other great stretch goal rewards on Kickstarter this June. Over the last two years, we have heard many in the manosphere parroting the talking points of the late Kevin Samuels talking about a high-value man. Well, I want to ask the critical question, what value does a high-value man have to the black community? And the reason why I'm asking the question, what value does a high-value man have to the black community, is because I don't see many of these high-value men going out here and building anything substantive, and I don't see any of these high-value men going out here and empowering other brothers and sisters. For the last two years, as your Kevin Samuels was alive, all he talked about was high-value men and then regurgitated the same talking points of the gender war that had been going back and forth for the last 15 years. And to me, that had no real value, especially when many of the members of the Manosphere were out here talking about how they wanted nothing to do with the so-called communita. And to me, when you have males like this talking about how they want nothing to do with the communita, how can you say that you are a high-value man? I mean, what value do you bring to a place that you want nothing to do with, and then you say you want nothing to do with this place, yet you still want to get views from members of that community, and you want to go out here and get those subscribers watching your content. And when I look at that type of vulture-like behavior, it is no different than the Arab grocery store owner, the Korean hair and nail salon, the Indian fast food restaurant, the white supermarket, the Hispanic bodega, all of those individuals come to the community to get whatever they want in terms of resources, and then after they take the resources out of the community, they then go back and enrich themselves at the black community's expense. And that's what these so-called high-value acolytes do when they make their content. They are no different than any of those foreign store owners who go out here and make their money at the expense of black people. But what's worse is these males go out here and talk about how they are high value, but bring nothing of value to a community they say they want nothing to do with. And that is what is most disturbing about these males. They are talking bad about a community, but want nothing to do with same said community. Now, in some ways, I would believe that to be hypocritical, but this just shows how deep the self-hatred is with many in the high-value crowd who sit there and say that they are of higher value but bring nothing of value to the black community. When I look at this so-called high-value crowd, it is just like the talented 10th that were around in the era of W.E.B. Du Bois. These so-called talented 10th individuals thought that they were better than everybody else because a white person put them in a high position, but they, they only put them there to be symbolically there to represent the white person's ideals of being black, but not bring anything of significant value to brothers and sisters because these individuals had no real power. And that's what the problem is with many in the high value cult. Many of these guys have a feeling of power because they want to get attention for themselves, but they really bring nothing of value to a black community except for their little idea of who they are. I mean, when you look at many of these guys who talk about high value, they bring nothing of value to any black community. And they don't bring anything to a black community 
because they just don't know how to go out here and build. Now, many of these guys who talk about being high value, they don't really understand the subtle politics transpiring around them, and they know nothing about the power that a man is supposed to have if he is supposed to be an asset to his community. Because putting on a suit that you bought from Zara or from Portabella for 50 bucks doesn't make you a high value man. It just makes you pooky in a suit because a high value man who understands his value, understands his greatest power is over himself and the power that the Most High gives him. Moreover, he understands that when he has power, his job is to empower others in his community because if he does not put himself and people who look like him first, then he's not even worth anything at all to anyone. So a man who has power, the first thing he's going to do is he's going to establish boundaries for his territory because in order for his territory to have value, he has to establish those lines so that people can understand what is really valuable. That is something I got from the brother-in-law of Logic and Common Sense's classic video about territory. And again, a man with power can establish lines of territory in his community, and that is the first establishment of power that he has after realizing his own value and worth. So he's going to establish a line of territory in his community, and he's going to ensure that his people are put in a place where they are protected and that is that shows his value as a man because he understands his value to him to his community and he understands the value of establishing hard lines for his community and after he establishes those hard lines he's going to use his power to protect his community so that I don't really see many of these guys talking about those aspects of power of establishing boundaries in a community and I don't see them talking about going out here and establishing those boundaries to protect black people. No, while they're sitting there saying they want nothing to do with the communita, they're out here um, having no problem participating in the same behavior that these outsiders do, like the Arab store owner, like the Korean hair and nail salon, and none of these guys are sitting there telling our brothers and sisters to go out here and buy black and participate in group economics, something that will add value to our community by ensuring that wealth stays in the community. Because every person who is taking money outside of the black community, they are enriching others at our expense, and what we're doing is building wealth outside of the community, and as they're building that wealth outside of the community, they are making others rich and allowing them to live a middle-class lifestyle at the expense of black people. And for too long, we have had too many people come into the black community because we did not establish hard lines as related to boundaries as re and establish territory that is the black community and demand that people respect those boundaries. So where are the high value men to go out here and establish hard boundaries in black communities? And where are the high value men who are out here looking to protect the black community? Because I don't see any of the high value guys talking about let's go out here and establish those lines. Let's go out here and establish boundaries. Let's go out here and protect the black community. No, all I hear is them saying they want nothing to do with a communita, but they want to go out here and get the money from the black community, and they want to go out here and build their platforms at the expense of the black community. Again, no different than the Arab store owner, the owner, Arab owner of the red and white chicken place, the Korean hair and nail salon, the, bo the Hispanic bodega, the white supermarket, no different than any of those guys, but these guys stand around in their Zara or their Portabella suits that cost 50 bucks, talking about high value, but bringing nothing of value to the black community. 
And as they're standing around in their Portabella and their Zara suits, these guys are sitting there talking about how they are high value, but again, have no power to go out here and build any businesses in the black community. I mean, that's one of the most troubling things about the so-called high value man. He talks about going out here and being high value, but he has no real power economically to build anything in his community. Because to me, if you are supposed to be a high value man, a high value man does not work for somebody else because where does your value come from if you're working for somebody else? That's a critical question that I have to ask after I watched the brother of Logic and Common Sense's classic video where he talked about the safe haven black person. Where is your value if you bring no if you're not owning your own assets and you don't have your own wealth? How can you be considered high value if you work for somebody else? Yes, you're making six figures, but the whole thing is that six figures can be taken at any time by those white business owners or those foreign business owners, and then you've got nothing to be able to have at all. So you sitting there saying, I'm high value, and you work for somebody else, Basically, this is clout chasing and you trying to say that you have high status, but you don't have any status at all because a white supremacist can take whatever you have at any given time. Now, if you are supposed to be a valuable asset to your community as I see it, you would be able to have black owned businesses in the territory you have established and when you have black owned businesses in that territory, you're going to be able to go out here and hire brothers and sisters and make sure that they get paid from the business that you have. To me, that is a high value man because he is one, establishing boundaries in his community, two, has the resources to protect the, re the community and enforce those boundaries, and three, he can go out here and build businesses in his community and ensure that his people are hired and working in his community and going out here and ensuring that black people are living a high quality of life. To me, that is a high value man because that high value man can go out here and ensure that black people are the ones who are benefiting economically from his resources and benefiting from his investment in the community. That's what high value means to other white and non-black communities. When a white or a non-black community is running, they put value on those who go out here and can lay a foundation for that community, establish boundaries for their community, protect their community, and then go out here and ensure that if there are businesses in their community, their people are the ones who are going to be working at those businesses and ensure that the wealth stays in their community. That is the foundation of power and that is what has value in a non-black or a white community and this is something that the high value crowd really does not understand about having actual value in a community because you sit there and talk about high value you sit there and talk about it from a surface standpoint and i dare to say a surface a standpoint from the way a house slave saw it but you don't see it the way an actual person sees power because a person who understands high value understands that they're going to be able to take care of their community and they're also going to be able to take care of their people and ensure that their people can't get fired. I mean, when you talk about high value, a person who has high value, they can not only make sure that their people get the jobs in their community, they can also make sure that when, when their people get on those jobs, those people can't get fired like I did back in 2008 when I was working at the City College of New York. 
And that's where, that's where I see the difference between actual power and, and your so-called high value. A person with power can ensure that a black person would not be forced out of their job and they would ensure that that person would have some sort of protection and they would also be out here looking out for their people so that their people would not get jacked up and they would also have the power to deal with black bootlicks that's what power is power does not go out here and submit to others power is having the leadership ability to ensure that your people are put first and your people are taken care of first that is what actual power is and that's why i say high value has absolutely no value because high value does not bring anything of value to black people all your high value does is talk about the illusion of power and all it does is go out here and stimulate people's emotions so that they can get into a back and forth with pookies in suits talking by arguing about gender war talking points and as they're arguing about gender war talking points they are distracted from the actual road of black empowerment that's why i call it the high value distraction because as many saw many black americans talking about going out here and empowering themselves by doing things like demanding tangibles from their the government that they are a citizen of and going out here and talking about group economics they did not want us talking about these things so what the powers that be went out here is din did was create the gimmick of high value and allowed that gimmick to go on these social media platforms to distract us from the actual road of black empowerment because again what value does a high value man have if that man cannot even go out here and build in his own community if he cannot establish lines in his own community if he cannot create an economic base in his own community what value does a high value man have moreover what value does a high value man have if he doesn't want anything to do with his community and is out here talking about entertaining those outside of his community and some of them on this save yourself narrative are talking about pursuing relationships outside of the so-called communita that they want nothing to do with so when i look at them i ask what value does a high value man have because when i look at the whole narrative of high value i don't see much value that it has to everyday brothers and sisters and the reason why i say that it doesn't have much value is because it's not about creating a foundation for black empowerment it is not about creating a foundation where black men and women work together towards building a better black community no it's just a place where your guys can go out here and play pretend and clout chase online without building anything of actual substance in the real world because to sit here and talk about high value when you bring nothing of value to the table is not building anything substantive for the brothers and sisters because to me what actual high value is again is being able to not only set lines for your community but ensure that your brothers and sisters wind up employed because playing big shot when somebody else owns all of the property doesn't make it where you're high value at all i mean how can you say you're high value when you own no property when you have no businesses when you aren't employing other people that to me is not high value no that is just the same type of clout chasing and and pretending and perpetrating i have seen ever since the 1980s when these guys would go out here they would go out here and buy stuff on credit at like these expensive jordans 
or go out here and dress up and try to look fly, but at the end of the day, they really weren't working towards anything that would be substantive at all. And we have to get out of these whole ideas of high value as related to these social um, currency, because social currency does not build tangible wealth. No, tangible wealth is built by those who understand their value, understand their worth, and understand that the more black people are in a place, the more power you have overall. Because what I'm seeing with this so-called high value group, again, is the same thing as the Talented Tenth, a group of so-called elite blacks who were put up in their positions of power by whites, and these guys think that they have power, but at the end of the day, they are submitting to the same white supremacist who ensures that, oh, I'll stroke these guys' egos, make them think that they're worth something, and then as they're sitting there thinking that they're worth something, they're looking down at their own people and never thinking once to empower their own people because they want to continue gaining favor from those outside of their community. And that's what the Talented Tenth was that rendered them useless to black people. Because the Talented Tenth, as they were sitting there in their high positions, looking to clout chase with your whites and non-blacks, never once thought to reach back to get other brothers and sisters and put them in positions of, and with them because they wanted to be the H nice. Unfortunately, the H nice had no real power because he was the only one in the room. And what was really sad about the H nice was as the only one in the room, he was basically alone and basically at the mercy of those whites and non-blacks who went out here and they made sure to bring their people in the room and they had 10, 15, 20 of their people in the room. Meanwhile, he's the only black person and he's trying to hold on to his position, but he doesn't understand if he had brought in other brothers and sisters, he would have more power to go out here and be able to do things because there's more strength in numbers and there's more strength in numbers when you start owning assets and that's something many of the Talented Tenth never did. The Talented Tenth wanted their crumbs from the table but they never wanted to make their own bread. And that is the problem with those who follow the high value narrative like the Talented Tenth. They want to go out here and get crumbs from the table but they don't want to go out here and learn the recipe for success of making bread. They don't want to go out here and own an oven. They don't want to go out here and hire other brothers and sisters to work at the bakery. They don't understand that the more numbers that you have, the more power that you have, and they want to be the special H nice in that spot. But special H nices don't really do anything for anyone. And that's why I say your so-called high value men have no value to a black community because they cannot use any of, of their influence and power to go out here and get a black man hired. They can't do anything to, to push a black owned business. They are just basically there to talk about these gender war talking points, but they bring nothing of real substance to the table. They bring nothing that brings power to black people. They can't empower anyone. So what value does a high value man have if the high value man can't bring anything valuable back to the black community that they say they want nothing to be a part of? And that is why your high value man has no value because if he had value, he would be in his community building up his community and bringing resources back to his community because the more resources you bring back to a community the better quality of life there is in a community and that is why your high value man has next to no value because if he had value he would be bringing he would be establishing his wealth base in that community instead of looking to take money straight out of his community just like the whites and non-blacks who exploit it. Now, if you want to um, um, support 
the upcoming Kickstarter for my John Haynes comic book, John Haynes at Death's Door, you can click the link and sign up for the list to be notified about that Kickstarter, which will be coming on June 22nd. And if you want to pick up some of the positive fiction on the SJS Direct imprint, like the Isis series, the E-Steam series, the John Haynes series, and the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, you can find those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find those books on Smashwords, the iBook Store, and Google Play. And if you want to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis Legacy. The sorority secrets of the goddess next door are revealed in this all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis Legacy in paperback and e-readers at online booksellers everywhere.